2006 Chrysler Pacifica. The issue with this car is the speedometer will read 20 miles per hour when we're sitting still. Now I'm in park right now. Let me throw it in, in gear, actually any gear. There's reverse. Now I'm at 20, I'm not moving. There's neutral, drive. Speedo's reading 20 miles per hour, we're not moving. We have a check engine light on, we're not worried about that. It has an EGR fault in it, no other fault codes in memory. And this EGR fault's typical with Chrysler stuck valve. Again, nothing to do with this speedometer issue. We're gonna go under the hood now. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is some alternator tests. I have my positive lead for my scope connected right to the BAT post of the alternator. I think that's very important for this procedure that you're doing it at the alternator and not the battery. Don't know if that's showing up. Yep, right on the BAT post. And then I have my negative lead going right to battery ground. Using my little handheld Varus here today. And what we see on the meter, is we have decent charging voltage at 14.4. But what we notice right away about this line is we don't like it. There's a lot of noise, a lot of hass in this line. And so what I'd like to do is I would like to zoom in on this area and we can do a few things. First, we can drop our time base and we can look at that a little bit in, in more detail. And you can see some ripple in there that we don't want to see when we're looking at alternators. And then the other thing would be, I want to look at that more zoomed in voltage wise. So there's an issue though. If I drop this down to 10 volts, it goes off my screen. What I'd like to do is really look at around the two volt scale, but I can't because it's way, way up here off the screen. So this is when we do something that we don't use often when we use scopes, and that is AC coupling. And when I AC couple this scope, what that's gonna do is it's gonna block all the DC constant, and it's just gonna show me the AC of this signal. So now you see we're down here around zero. Take that zero line, I'm gonna move it up. And now what I can do is I can take this and look at it on lower voltage scales, and we can really see what that alternator ripple looks like. Looking at these patterns, you know, they've been difficult for me over the years, knowing what a good one looks like, knowing what a bad one looks like. And I have to tell you guys that having some up, down, and a waveform isn't so bad, but if you look at this scale, we're going negative two volts to positive two volts. Let me reset that, and refresh that number. Negative two, nine, positive two. That's a four volt peak to peak. That is way too much AC voltage. The little ripple you see on top of these is not a problem. The bad diode here, guys, is the big one. It's pulling the whole system up and down. We don't wanna see that. So what's happening is this AC voltage is pumping through the entire system and it's affecting the speed sensor signal, which is also an AC generator. Why is it the speed sensor in particular? Because the output speed sensor in this car produces an AC sine wave. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you guys, I've already connected to it. My, my second channel is connected to my output speed sensor. And notice on the display, I'm on a two volt scale on this one. Notice on the display that that output speed sensor signal is corresponding directly with this alternator ripple pattern. Now the thing is, this car is in park right now. We're not moving. The output speed of that sensor, there's no signal there at all until the wheels start turning. It doesn't matter if I drop it in gear, put it in neutral, whatever, that output speed sensor should not be turning. And this is showing that it is. The only reason in park that we read zero is because the computer's interpretation of that output speed sensor signal is pretty much ignoring it in park. So go ahead and throw that neutral if you're not already. No change here, but inside the car you saw the speedometer change. So next thing I'm gonna show you guys is I'm just gonna zoom you out here for a second and let you see both. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unplug this alternator, just the control circuit. You can actually hear this alternator humming too. We can't always go by noises though. Unplug the alternator, 
what you notice is my AC signal goes away on the alternator itself and then my AC sine wave for my output speed sensor also goes away. We have an alternator that is causing this condition. Bad diode in the alternator. All right, one last thing for this video is going to be to look at this same pattern here on the battery and I want to show you the difference between the two. So let me set it up. All right, so last thing with this guys is when we do alternator ripple testing, we always want to go to the alternator. If you look at, at this yellow trace, again, I'm on the BAT post and now my green trace, I've moved it. I went right to battery positive over there. So we're comparing battery positive now to what the BAT post looks like on the alternator on the yellow trace. And if you look at the signals, what you see is a lot more amplitude in this yellow trace. We have a peak to peak of negative 2.5 to positive 2.8. We're at the battery, we're at 1.35 negative to positive 1.15. Let me refresh that, get one last shot of that. And it's even better, 0 0.84, 0 0.57. Look at the difference in the amplitude of these signals. They're both set on five volt scales. They're both AC coupled right now. Show you my settings, AC coupling, five volt on channel one. Channel two, I'm AC coupled. I'm on five volt on channel two. So you see my scales are the same. Notice the difference in the amplitude. When we do alternator ripple testing, you have to go to the alternator. Now in this car, it's bad enough that we actually are seeing the ripple on the battery, but I'm telling you guys, and you can see it right here, more accurate when you're at the alternator BAT post. So we can think of the battery as a cushion or a sponge here as far as why. And uh, I think the key with this one, guys, is understanding that alternators can really cause some crazy things to happen on a car. The last one of these I saw, the garage owner replaced the output speed sensor twice, replaced the engine computer, and replaced the wiring harness in the car for this condition because he could not get rid of an, uh, an output speed sensor trouble code. So be aware of this. Nice easy test if you don't have a scope, guys, is you can go inside the car, look at the speedo going crazy, unplug the alternator, and watch your speedo drop to zero and it does. So you guys that don't have a scope, you can do that test. A little bit tough on some of the cars getting to the alternator to do that test. So it really helps to know how to do the scope stuff too. So hope you like that. Faulty diode in an alternator.